President-elect Donald Trump said that he and President Barack Obama had never met before. Well, the two finally introduced themselves in Washington, D.C. as Trump took the tour of the house he'll call home for the next four years. Project Claudia shut down several illegal dispensaries across the city of Toronto, but several clinics, like Canna Clinic here, have three locations and none of them have been touched. Air Transit reimbursed their passengers with a free meal, hotel stay and a $200 voucher. But once they touched down here in Toronto, many of the passengers believed that just wasn't enough. Back in 2014, they only had 100 random drugs tests. Well, this year, they upped that number big time to 500 random drug tests. Three people who live in this townhouse complex who told me that they are not surprised in the slightest that this unit was targeted. About half of those stores are now closed thanks to those mass raids. And medical marijuana activists were not happy one bit. In a photo now showing White House staffers gathering at the Rose Garden to hear President Obama congratulate Trump has, of course, gone viral, mainly for the seemingly you know, somber looks on their faces. Lori Neve took her time to thank these Hamilton first responders. I remember you. You were the one that was holding my hand, right? You were. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> I don't want to cry. <laughs> oh, nice no. to see you under better circumstances. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> Because during the past August long weekend, it appeared that she ran out of it. Lori suffered a heart attack and lost her vital signs. She died. I heard voices, and I don't know if it's probably all of you that were there, but um, but it was, um, and then all of a sudden I woke up to you <laughs> doing compressions on my chest. Paramedics and firefighters crammed into the ambulance and performed CPR. After some tense moments, Lori's heart miraculously kick-started. My family's very grateful as well for because you were quick and you were on the scene fast and you did what you do so well every day and I don't know if a lot of people thank you for that. I want to thank them very much for, for saving my mom's life. Hi there. Thank you so much, my dear. You're welcome. I'm so glad things are going well. <laughs> they are. Since her brush with death, not only has Lori revamped her lifestyle choices, she's looking at the world differently this time around. You know, it has changed the way that I think I think about myself and everything around me. And it's these people that I have to thank for that. <laughs> and what's the best way to thank hardworking first responders? Food. Uh, Lori surprised everyone with those boxes you saw there. They're filled with chocolates and cookies, and of course, they were heart-shaped. <laughs> you see, two Canadian pilots with Air Transit were arrested at Glasgow Airport on suspicion of being impaired shortly before they were due to take off on a flight to Toronto. Now, while many were glad to arrive safely this afternoon, others were looking for some payback. All 250 of these Air Transat passengers had no idea what caused their flight cancellation until they picked up the local paper this morning. It's from the uh, blood of pilots on the sun, so that's how we knew it was eventually. Shortly before takeoff, the flight crew called police after noticing that both pilots were acting suspiciously. Passengers were told at the time it would only be a short wait. It was so hot, we were there for five hours before they told us that they, it was cancelled. And then we were taking, but it took us another two and a half hours to get out of the airport with our baggage. Ontario pilots, 39-year-old Captain Jean-Francois Perrault and 37-year-old Imran Zafar Saeed were arrested and charged with being impaired. The Scottish Sun reports that both men are deemed flight risks and will remain in custody until they're back in court within the week. If two people who are drunk are in charge of a bloody airplane flying over the Atlantic in such sensitive times as we find ourselves in at the moment, um, at any time it's a tricky, tricky situation to have to resolve. In the industry, they will probably lose their license or be under suspension of their license uh, and they could be facing jail time. While Canadian figures were unavailable, the U.S. Federal Aviation Agency screens tens of thousands of staff each year and the records show that between 2010 and 2015, 64 pilots tested positive for alcohol or drugs. Once the flight was officially cancelled, Air Transat reimbursed their passengers with a free meal, hotel stay and a $200 voucher. But once they touched down here in Toronto, many of the passengers believed that just wasn't enough. I think they need to be um, compensating us for the time that we could have been at work today. We've only got 11 days and now we only have 10. A little punitive, man. Give us our ticket back, you know? But at the same time, all the passengers were praising the staff who reported the drunk pilots, avoiding what could have been a devastating outcome. Better than crashing somewhere in the yeah, Atlantic. Better. People were just grateful to be back. We're always grateful when we come back to Toronto, and I think today even more so.
Well, Eric Transa sent out a tweet about 13 hours ago and said they're going to be refraining from commenting on the incident until a final court decision has been made.